Here's a circular motion problem where a car passes through a dip in the road and you can describe that dip with a radius of curvature and so the car is actually in circular motion for a brief period of time. So you don't have to have like a, a situation where a rock is spinning on a circular path for a really long time to call it circular motion. It could just be a simple little piece of a turn just for a brief moment. So we're given um, the car's moving 15 meters per second. That's in the diagram. The dip has a 20 meter radius of curvature. That's already in the diagram. And I'm given the normal force, or uh, I'm given the weight on the passenger, which I've always found a little bit annoying, but it's a very popular thing to do in physics books. So I thought I would show this. Um, it does have an upside to, to presenting the problem this way, and we'll get there at the end. Um, but I would much prefer to have a mass. And so I'm going to say, well, their weight is mg, so their mass must be their weight divided by g, which is 784 divided by 9.8. That'll pop out in kilograms. So I get the mass of this person as 80 kilograms even. And I'll hang on to that. All right, so there's a person in here with a mass of 80 kilograms. All right, then I can get into some force analysis. So this person is moving in, in a circular path, which means they must be accelerating to the center of curvature with an acceleration equal to V squared over R. So there must be a net force in that direction to cause that to happen. Well, I have the normal force on the person pointing to the center of curvature perpendicular to the road. So that's good. That's part of what's going on in that direction. The other part is that gravity is still pulling straight down. So I tried to draw it into the picture that the force of gravity is weaker than the normal force. This must be true because I need a net force to point to the center of curvature to cause the acceleration in that direction. So let me put it in my acceleration vector real quick. And I'm going to call that the positive direction for the analysis of this problem. And then I can just get into the applying Newton's second law. So F net, if I want to be really thorough, F net in the y direction is equal to m times a in the y direction. We're looking at the y analysis of this person. And so I have my net force, n minus mg. And then the y acceleration is v squared over r. And I'm able to solve for the normal force on this person. So it's going to be m times the quantity g plus v squared over r. So I'm ready to just go ahead and solve. So I have 80 kilograms, 9.8 meters per second squared. v squared is 15 meters per second quantity squared over r, 20 meters. And you should, you should verify the units are all working. So in this numerator, I have meters squared over seconds squared. Then I divide by meters, so I have meters per second squared. Those are units of acceleration, just like g had attached to it. And units of mass over here times units of acceleration. That gives me newtons. So I'm going to smash the numbers real quick. And I get it 1684 all right so this is pretty intense uh, to go through a dip with that radius of curvature that fast um, the usefulness of expressing this person's weight as 784 is this gives me a sense for how much the person ordinarily feels the normal force pushing up on their feet or if they're sitting down the chair pushing up on their butt 784 newtons of force right now they're feeling more than double that much so this is a really intense turn I could even express it as a multiple so I'm just taking 1684 divided by 784 um, and this is 2.14 times or 2.15 times their normal apparent weight. Another way to say it is they're pulling 2.15 g's of acceleration.